Hello, this is Jared from LearnToDroid.com. This is part three of the tutorial for creating a Minesweeper game for Android. As you can see where we left off, we've created a grid and we've exposed all the tiles containing the bombs and the numbers and the blank cells. What we'll start doing in this part of the tutorial is implementing the click functionality for each of the tiles and implementing the reveal logic. So we'll jump into the Minesweeper game class and we'll need to start creating some new methods here. So what we'll do first is we'll add a Boolean variable to the Minesweeper game class. And this is for indicating if the game is in clear mode or not. And by default, uh, the construct in the constructor, we'll initialize the clear mode value to true. Next, I'll create a method a public method inside the Minesweeper game class called handle cell click, which takes a cell as a parameter. In addition to this, I'll create a new method called clear that also takes a cell as a parameter. In the handle cell click method, we will check if the game is currently in clear mode and if so, we'll invoke the clear method, passing the cell. So I'll copy in two lines of code into the clear method. The first line is for getting the index of the cell from the list of cells from the mind grid. And the second line will update the Boolean value of is revealed on that cell to set it to true. So we'll add more to this method later, but what I'll do next is I'll jump back into the main activity and in the onCellClick method, I'll take away this toast message. And instead what I'll do is I'll call game.handleCellClick and I'll pass in the cell. After the handleCellClick method, what we need to do is we need to update the MindGrid Recycler Adapter with the new set of cells. So we can retrieve those cells from the game class. Now I'll make some changes to the Recycler Adapter class. At the moment we're showing everything in the grid of tiles. So what we want to do instead is only show that cell contents if it is in a revealed state. So let's test this out in the emulator. Now you can see that the cells are getting revealed. So next what we want to do is when we clear a blank cell, it should also clear all the adjacent blank cells to that blank cell. So I'll update the clear method. I'll paste in some code into it to handle this uh, scenario. So what we're doing is we're checking that the cell contains a blank using the if uh, using an if statement. Then what we'll do is we'll create an array list of cells to clear, and we'll create an array list of cells to check because they're adjacent. So we'll add the initial cell that we clicked on to the uh, to check adjacent array list. We'll keep going through this while loop as long as the check adjacent size is greater than zero. So we'll grab the first item in the to check adjacent array list and we'll get its cell index. And what we'll do is we'll get its X and Y coordinates using the 2XY method. From then what we'll do is we will get the list of adjacent cells using the X and Y coordinates and we'll loop through each of these using a for each loop. For each of those adjacent cells, we'll check if it has the value of blank and if it doesn't already exist in the to clear array list and it doesn't already exist in the to check adjacent array list, we will add this to the check adjacent array list. Otherwise, if it's not a blank, we'll check it's not in the to clear list. And if that's the case, we'll add it to the to clear list. Now, the reason why we do this is because we're not only clearing the blanks, we're also clearing one adjacent cell to each of the blanks, uh, which will be a number. 
So we need to make sure we do that as well. Also in the while loop, uh, after that for each uh, loop, we will remove the cell from the adjacents list and we'll add it to the two clears list at the end. And we'll keep repeating this until we've gone through all the adjacents in the adjacents array list. Finally, what we'll do in this method is we'll create a for each loop and we'll go through each cell in the to clear array list and we'll set them to revealed uh, by passing the value of true. So let's show this in the emulator now. So as you can see, I selected a blank. It's cleared all the blanks that are adjacent to that blank. And it's also cleared a set of numbers that are touching the blanks. Do that again. And you can see the same has happened here as well. So what I haven't implemented yet is the game over on the selection of a bomb. So we'll do that next. So now we'll implement the game over functionality on the selection of a bomb. So if a bomb selected, what we want to do is uh, create a toast message saying the game is over. And also what we want to do is we're going to show all the other bombs that are on the screen as well. So let's implement that now. So we'll add a variable, a Boolean variable to the Minesweeper game class called is game over. And in the Minesweeper game constructor, we will default that to false. In the handle cell click method, we will also check if the game is not over before we clear any cells. In the clear method, what we'll do is um, we'll add an else if statement to check if the cell value is equal to uh, the bomb. And if, if that's the case, we want to set the game over value to true. We'll add a getter to the Minesweeper game class for is game over. Next, what we'll do is we'll jump into the main activity and we will update the on cell click method to check if the game is over. And if that's the case, what we'll do is we'll create a toast and we'll pass the message of game is over. Make it a short toast and then we'll go to the show method to show the toast. Okay, so now what's left is we want to be able to show all the bombs if a bomb is selected. So we'll jump into the mind grid class and we'll add a new method and we'll call it reveal all bombs. And what it will do is it will, uh, I'll start a for loop and we'll go through each cell and We'll check if the cell is a bomb. And if that's the case, we will set the cell to revealed. In the main activity class, after we show the toast message, we will invoke reveal all bombs. One more thing we'll do is we'll move this set cells method to the bottom of the method call. So we can catch all the changes that we make to revealing the bombs. We'll test it in the emulator now. As you can see, I've selected a bomb. It's created a toast message saying the game is over and it's exposed all the other bombs. So next what we'll do is we'll implement a method to check if we've won the game by clearing everything except for the bombs. So to do this, I'll jump into the Minesweeper game class and I'll add a new method underneath the clear method called isGame1. I'm just pasting in the code here. It will return a Boolean value. And what we're doing is we're looping through all the cells in the grid. And if the cell is not a bomb and the cell is not a blank, 
and it's not revealed, then we'll add one to the count. If the count ends up being zero, we will say that the game has been won. Otherwise, we'll say the game has not been won and return a false. So we'll test this out in the emulator. Okay, and as you can see, the game has been won and the bombs got revealed at the end.